And that was a microphone that had been loaned to me from a fellow booth junkie for me to share with you all, 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 all on that channel, all at that time. <sighs> Energy. Energy makes the tongue go a little bit funny sometimes. <laughs> What's happening, Boot Junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on Home Studio Setup for VoiceOver. And this is a little bit of a reprise of a, of a, a video I made about a year ago. So if you're watching this in early 2019, in early 2018, I made a video about a microphone that a fellow booth junkie had loaned to me. Thanks, Randall. A fellow booth junkie did that, that had loaned a mic to me that was the Lewitt LCT 550. And I really, I really like that microphone. I like that microphone so much that I ended up negotiating a deal and I bought that microphone off the boot, the boot junkie who sent it to me. I really liked it. The catch of that microphone was that it was discontinued. At the time, still discontinued, at the time you couldn't get it unless it was new old stock or you were buying it secondhand. Turns out that the folks from Lewitt had seen that, saw that video, had seen that video, they watched that video, and they said, well, would you like to test out and share the current version of that, the one that's actually available. Would you like to share that version uh, with your audience? And I said, hell yeah, I would. Heck, heck yeah, I would. And so not only did they send me its successor, this is the Lewitt LCT 540 Sub-Zero. They also sent me a few of the other goodies. They sent me some other ones from their line. The 240, the, sorry, the 240, the 440, the 540, which we're talking about today, and holy cow, the 640, which I am, re this is going to have to be a video, and so holy cow. I might make one that just sort of runs down the, the Lewitt line as I have it, um, but I, were, I really want to say thank you, thank you to the incredible generosity of Lewitt Microphones for sharing them with me so that I could share them with you. Really super, super cool. Thank you. Valerie and everybody over at Lewitt. What an incredibly, incredibly generous gesture. Really grateful for it. Okay, so let's talk about the Lewitt LCT 540 Sub Zero. <laughs> That's this one right here. And just to make it sort of similar to the one I did last year, we'll compare it against my Norman Neumann TLM 103. Okay, so let's talk about why I liked that microphone, and because this is essentially the same, I think, I, I didn't do a comparison specification to specification between the 550 and the 540, because the 550 is not available, doesn't really matter. Uh, but some of the features that make this such a cool microphone, there are so many cool features about the Lewitt microphones, and what attracted me to buy the one that I had offered to me, that I could, that I could work it. Some of the things I liked so much about it, that I'll, I'll, I'll just sort of go over them again with you. First, let's just talk about some of the, the main specifications of them. It's a, it's a cardioid pattern microphone, just like the TLM-103 and like many other the microphones that we use for voiceover. Cardioid pattern means it's very sensitive from the front and rather insensitive from the back. If you were to turn this microphone around and speak into the back of it, it's not you won't hear hardly anything. You'd hear really just the reflections of the sound uh, in the room. So they're cardioid. They're sensitive from the front. There's essentially cardioid because it's a vaguely heart-shaped pattern that goes around, and it's from about 90 degrees uh, off to the side and, and behind you. They're sensitive from one side. Cardioid pattern. Uh, they both have similar uh, specifications as far as uh, their... Um, they're from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. They both have really super high sound pressure levels that they, that they can, that, for sound sources that you could, uh, Mike. I think uh, I've got my spec sheets down here. I've got um, 136 decibels, 138 decibels for the Neumann, uh, 136 for the, for the Lewitt. The Lewitt is called the Sub-Zero. It's got Sub-Zero in the name. And one of the things that Lewitt really um, sort of talks about a great deal in their, in the marketing for this microphone is that its internal noise A weighting is that it's essentially below the threshold for human hearing. It's zero dB. Now, that's a little bit of spec talk. I'll, I'll, I'll be frank with you. From my understanding, it's a little bit of spec talk. Yeah, it's super quiet. It is as quiet as a microphone could be, is what they assert. 
However, there is a little bit of noise that will be present in there. And I think I said this in the other video, just because of the motion of the air. As we stir up air around us, some of those air molecules bump into the diaphragm and that causes the, micro, the, the diaphragm to move. And that shows up as an audible shows up as as audible uh, and so this one actually claims the the 540 actually claims 4 db equivalent noise value whereas the neumann is ooh, i bumped it ooh, seven seven db for all intents and purposes these microphones are silent when i listen in my headphones there's nothing there's, I know they say that a lot about a lot of microphones, but there is really nothing about these. There's no coloration. I don't hear any. I mean, I just don't hear anything. I'll turn my preamp all the way up. There's nothing. There's no coloration. There's no hiss. There's no anything. You can hear. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing how quiet these microphones are, both of them. And so the, uh, the Lewitt is extraordinarily quiet. Other things I'd like about, okay, so that's, so it's, they're very quiet. They can hear everything. They can reproduce it with really exquisite detail, really, really detailed microphones, one and all. A significant difference between them. These are both high-end mics. Let's not kid ourselves. These are both high-end microphones. But the Lewitt costs about 60% of the Neumann. Uh, the Lewitt is $599 when I last checked, and the TLM-103 is $1,100 when I last checked. That's 60%, but you're getting, all. I, as far as I'm concerned, you're getting 100% of the quality at 60% of the price. But it's still no joke. I mean, let's be frank. Six hundred dollars—that's a lot of that's a lot of scratch for a microphone. So I, I recognize I recognize that. But if you're in the market for the high end, for the high end microphone for voiceover, and you're not going to go spend ten or fifteen thousand dollars for a microphone, then these are these are really sort of excellent choices for voiceover. Let's talk about some of the other features that I love. Some of the things that really attracted me to, to the the Lewitt. Uh, one is it is a very for what it is it's a low profile microphone now the the Neumann TLM 103 is a tiny microphone by all intents and purposes when you look at this microphone compared to other ones it's a small microphone and you see that the Lewitt is on par with it it comes with this integrated shock mount I know it's black but uh, it's a very small it's a really small shock mount but really effective as I go and handle you get very little rumble. Yeah, do you get rumble? Yeah, it's unavoidable. But as as you as you uh, handle the microphone, the shock mount, you'll see it doesn't add like total rumble in there. Just like the the Neumann is the same way. Right? You get a little bit, but these work fairly well. Uh, and so they both come. Uh, this one comes with the shock mount. I'm not sure about the TLM 103. If you have to buy the the shock mount aftermarket for Neumann, they're like 200 bucks. They're no joke. The Lewitt also comes with, <laughs> I love this feature, I demonstrated it in the other one, it comes with an integrated removable pop filter. Look at this. You just get a little pop filter that is perfectly matched, form-fitting to the microphone, and it just, it just click, clicks in with magnets. Now, on the other hand, I have a typical voiceover setup for the, the Neumann, and that is where you have it, an external... Um, pop filter and this is a another this is a very expensive pop filter let's not kid ourselves this is a Stedman PS 101 and this pop filter is $60 so all of a sudden look at how much more money this is and this is a this is a really good this is a pro level windscreen and but it's another $60 and you can see that it is it's uh it it gets in your way so as a voice actor one of the things that you contend with, certainly that I contend with, is if you're looking at your copy, which will be right here, and you're looking at it, you have to look through a pop filter to see your copy. I'm perpetually looking through through pop filters with one with one eye, and I'm trying to 
trying to stay in front of the mic. The, the, the director always like, get in front of the mic, Mike. And you're like, well, you can't see my copy. So you do this. And they're like, get in front of the mic, Mike. And, and, you, and so you're perpetually looking through it. The, the LCT 540 and the other Lewitt mics that are of similar form factor, there's, you can see, you get as much view as you can around it. The pop filter is not in your way. And it's integrated. And I just love that. I just love that. I want to give just a, a little follow-up and, and talk about the size difference for this microphone and how nice that integrated pop filter is on the Lewitts. Now, you see on the, on the, on the TLM-103, I do have this low-profile uh, steel pop filter in front of it. But in many cases, this is the next nearest one I can think of that has an integrated steel pop filter. This is the Rode NT-1 uh, kit. And you can see the significant size difference between these two microphones. So if I hold them, I don't know if you can see the bottom, but this microphone is probably a third again as tall. And it has still a very modest but large pop filter in front of it. And you can see what the size difference is between them. So I, I do want to sort of emphasize the, uh, the um really compact nature of the Lewitt microphone. I think it's a really nice piece of engineering and, and, and how that works in there. Now, there are some buttons and switches on the Lewitt that are not present on the Neumann. And again, I say this in a lot of videos, whether the manufacturer elects to put um, buttons or switches on, it's really just what they elect to do. I don't think it speaks to either higher quality or lower quality in a microphone. Some just put it in there and some don't. The Neumann TLM-103 has no buttons, no switches, no nothing. If you wanna do anything to adjust the signal, you either change where the mic is placed or you add some effects downstream. You want to uh, take away some bass, you got to roll it off somewhere else downstream. Piece of hardware, piece of software, downstream. The Lewitt and many other microphones have a couple of buttons and switches built in. So it can pad, which means it can reduce the sensitivity by take it down by six decibels and by 12 decibels. There's a little switch on the front. And if you press the switch on the front, I will press the switch on the front. If I can darken here, uh, there it is. So now I take it out by six decibels and I'll press it again. And I take it out by 12 decibels. So you'll see it gets much quieter. Let me stop handling the mic. It is much quieter. So you can mic a really super loud source by taking some of that away. Let's put it back to where it is. Sorry, it's dark on this side of the mic because I got these lights in my face so I can't see the button. Now, this also has a roll-off switch or a high-pass filter, low-cut filter, whatever you want to call it. Um, what you do see a lot in microphones is the ability to take some bass away uh, depending on the source that you're miking. Sometimes if you're recording your voice, what happens very commonly is they will roll off all of the, uh, the bass frequencies below, say, 80 hertz uh, because there's a natural bassiness that really doesn't necessarily, it can, be, it can be somewhat fatiguing over time where you want it to sound low, but you don't necessarily need your voice to rumble. And so, like, I have some some low in my voice, and sometimes it can really make it rumble. So sometimes what directors will do or producers will do is they will, let me press the button here, they will cut everything below 80 hertz because it's not really contributing to the sound of the voice. It may interfere with other aspects of the track. Uh, so if you're, if you're being placed over sound effects, there's probably bass information in the sound effects, so they'll want to take it out of my voice so it doesn't interfere. And so that's one thing that they can do. Now, this one has not only the 80 hertz, but if you press that button again, it's a 160 hertz roll off. So you can take even more bass away. And you can see before when it just takes away the, from 80 and below, the character of my voice doesn't change that much, but it is there's a lot less rumble in it. So if you're listening to it on studio monitors, um, you'll see it goes away. Now at 160, I think it really, really takes, and clearly it takes a lot of the bass away. It does change slightly the character of the way I sound, but that's just because the bass frequency isn't there. You could do this in an EQ after the fact, but sometimes when you're actually miking the source, you want to take away, let's say I was outside or I was outside of the studio. You'd want to take that rumble of just the ambient world away. And you can do that with the 160 or the 80 hertz roll off. Now, press the button again and just bring it back to square so that we're back to normal. 
the uh, a feature that I've only seen in the Lewitt microphones. It was in the 550, and it's also here in the 540. Is the ability to understand if it's clipping and to help you out if that happens. So because this has two padding switches, you can activate on the microphone itself a clipping like a limiter. So if you start to clip the microphone, it will automatically duck down and pad the source. Uh, it will pad itself so that you can continue to record something that's super loud. Fix that little adjustment in post, but you will preserve the take. So let's say you're miking a concert. Uh, you're miking a symphony or something like that, and there's a big crash, and all of a sudden it clips. It, it can duck it down now. That might not be the thing you want to do if you're making a symphony, but if you're a symphony, but if you're doing this for yourself and you want to try and preserve the take, you can't get a second take of it. I'd rather have that mic duck it a little bit so I could try and fix it uh, than lose it altogether because it clips. Um, so you can have it automatically limit, or if you're doing a rehearsal type thing, you can also turn on what they call the clipping history and press a sequence of buttons on the uh, on the interface here. I think you press and hold the left and it will start to flash there's a little light that flashes on and off on the front the logo flashes on and off and then if you clip the microphone it will tell you hey you've clipped and it will suggest you should either dock by 6 db or by 12 db so if you're doing that in rehearsal and you're like oh man the the cymbal crash or whatever or the timpani drum causes a clip then you know you can you want to do it with a pad and that way when you're doing your real take you know that you should you should have that pad in place so you're more likely to get the right take the first time. So that's just an example that I'm making up off the top of my head. But that is what you can do with this microphone. I don't know of any other microphones. I, I'm unaware of, there may be other microphones to do it. I am unaware, and certainly none of the other ones I've tested. And all through the course of this channel, I've never found another microphone that does that clipping history. And I really think it's fascinating. I really think that that's a, a very, very helpful, a very helpful feature. Might not be something that as a, as a, uh, a typical narrator, voice actor would uh, encounter, but let's say that you're uh, doing anime or something like that, and a role calls for you to, all of a sudden, you got to scream, right? We see that a lot in anime. There's a ton of, scream, <laughs> a ton of screaming in, uh, in anime. You'd want to know if you're going to make that, that mic clip so that you could, if during rehearsals you could do it, or during your real take, you could say, it just activate the limiter and just duck it down real quick. So you're more likely to preserve the rest of the take. So you don't have to redo things over and over and over again just because you're working with the gain. So the uh, the the propaganda piece that they give you, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the sort of the advertisement card that comes with it does sort of walk through those, walk through those features. As far as the sound quality, one thing that I often hear when I'm listening in my headphones is for a difference between the two microphones. I'm listening to both at the same time in my head. And sometimes when I'm doing these things, there's a very significant difference between the two. And I can hear that in the form of comb filtering. It will sound, it will sound really distorted in my headphones. If two microphones are matched very well, it will just sound like one loud microphone in my head. And that's one thing that I definitely hear at this time is when I listen to these microphones both at the same time, they sound very similar. And if you look at the frequency response graphs, the frequency response graph just shows how sensitive the mic is at different frequencies in the audible spectrum from the bass to the treble. You will see that they do have two very, very similar frequency response graphs. And I think that bears out that these two microphones sound fairly similar. The Neumann, I will say, Neumanns just have a history, uh, uh, I think, an impression. One of the things that voice actors like about them is there is a certain coloration that, that Neumanns have that does something to the, to the mid-bass of your voice that sometimes sounds just really great. Uh, but even on, the, even on the Neumann website, when they talk about the TLM-103, it says it has a broad presence boost. Let me just get the exact words. A broad presence boost for enhanced sound definition. So in one of the other videos I did where I talked about um, the Deity microphone, that had a flat response in the treble, and it people said, where's the high end? It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound as crisp and as clear, and we had to fix that in the EQ curve after the fact. Many, many microphones have an EQ curve sort of built into it where they take everything, say, above 5,000 hertz, and they raise it to give a, a real clarity. 
Some microphone manufacturers do it really ham-handedly, and it can really affect the sound. Um, and others, they really care for the way that that presence booth boost is implemented and even though it sounds crisper and clearer it still sounds smooth and it doesn't sound difficult to listen to it's not problematic and I think both of these microphones do that I will say I think the bass region sounds a little bit different but I do think these are both extraordinary crystal crystal clear microphones without being at all difficult to listen to they're not fatiguing to the ears they're not piercing or they don't sound like Clacked, uh, cracked glass or anything like that. Try and, f- try and find analogous words that explain what it is that I hear. Um, and a lot of times it's just like needle in your ear. Uh, neither of these microphones display that. I think they are, the, the presence boost is well implemented. And I keep going back to 60% of the cost. More than 60 or less than 60% of the cost because if you do want to have a pro pop filter uh, and you do if you do need to buy a shock mount, you could be into this, if you're putting this together, you could be into this for $1,300. And now this is half the price, half the price. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to argue against the uh, LCT 540. I, th- I really do think it has a lot to speak for itself. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I've said this in many other videos. I'm a fan of the Lewitt microphones. I've bought them before with my own money. This one was given to me, but I have bought them before with my own money because I'm a fan. So I also want to talk for just a second about the uh, the case, the box. I mean, not really an unboxing video, but I do want to talk about the box that the Lewitt comes in, the case that you get with it. Um, so it is a, it's large and it's very ruggedized. This is a serious case, a serious case. Um, it does have the, the holes so you can padlock it shut. It has a little window so you can put your, uh, what, what it is or maybe your name, really handy. You do get a, you do get a little carry case, just a little uh, vinyl carry case. You do get a little spit filter. I wouldn't go so far as to call this a wind. Maybe it's a little bit of a windscreen, uh, but it probably is more, probably more for spit than <laughs> than anything. Effectiveness. You get a bracelet. You get a bracelet. That's cool. Uh, there's a little cigar band that comes around the microphone that takes it off, so you can know which one the fr- which in the front is. Plastic, silica, and so forth. So, oh, right on my fingers. Ouch. So, but you do get a really nice, very well insulated, really ruggedized case. Super cool. Uh, that's a that's a nice case. That's a nice case. What else is there to say about? Um, about either of these microphones. I don't think there's anything else I really need to say about them. Everything else, they're they're pretty much, they're very, very, they have a lot of parity between them, specification-wise, feature-wise, size-wise, everything else-wise. I've been really, thank you, thank you, Lewitt, for sending me this microphone. I'm super, super grateful for the opportunity to test it out. And I'm looking forward to, to doing the other ones in your line. We're, we'll, we'll take a look at all of them. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that helps. So if you're in the market for a nice high-end voice uh, microphone, I think that you should definitely give the Lewitt 540 a thought. So if you're like, I'm just going to go buy a TLM 103. Think about it. Think about it. Decide. Decide if that's where you want your, your money to go because there are other choices out there that could be just as effective for a lot less money. That's what I have for you today. I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Um, Now, go get yourself a microphone. And if you can't afford a a premium, uh, an ultra premium microphone like this, I I totally get it. But find yourself a microphone and then get out there and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.